All right, we want to welcome on a very special guest. Uh, that is Thomas Reed. And I guess let's let's just go. I want this was actually the first question I wanted to get into. So I actually want to just jump right in. Um, and Thomas is actually working to to get into the NFL right now. I believe you had a tryout um, just this past weekend from what Casey told me. But the first question I actually wanted to get into before we do anything else anything. on the back of your jersey, do you have is it just Reed or is it Reed the third? I have to put the read the third. I have All right, to. awesome. There it is. There that, it is. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, perfect. That's. I wanted to make sure we got that out beforehand. That kind yes. of sets the tone. If you were like, no, man, I just go with Reed. I'd be like, mm, what's up with this guy? But no, read the third. Perfect. As a fan, I can tell you, fans just love that. Looks so yes. much cooler. So I can't wait to see that on the back of an NFL jersey. Yeah, um, but let's get into everything else. Give. I mean, give us kind of a, a rundown of like how you got to where you're at. Where you recruited heavily out of high school did you have to kind of grind your way into where you're at right now and then um, a little bit of your college experience or Casey do you want to go somewhere else first well I, I was going to tell him that we're dating and that you need to tell me a little bit about yourself you know what I'm saying these are first dates you know what I'm saying um also the fact the fact that it's the third let me tell you number three is my favorite number I don't know if people have favorite numbers okay. but like three is my favorite number because I'm the third child right I'm the youngest. I'm the youngest, if you if you can't tell. Um, so I'm the third child. So I don't know. Three was always a big thing. And then your last name is it's it's my last name. So we <laughs> we could we could be, you know, related. Did we just become best um, friends. Uh yeah. obviously I, I need a new best friend. Um <laughs> but yeah, tell tell us a little bit about yourself, you know, or not us. I've obviously done my research on you. Um, but <laughs> Tell the audience like who, who you are, what started it, what makes you different? So born and raised in New York, uh, grew up in Long Island a little bit, went to Deer Park High School, did my four years there. And then I ended up going to uh, Lackawanna College at first. And then I ended up having to transfer out of there after my first semester of college, went to Nassau Community College. I was dealing with a lot there, um, just out, like outside personal, like personal stuff. And then I ended up going to ASA College in Brooklyn, graduated from there with my associates. I uh, got a scholarship to Adams State University in Colorado in Alamosa, and then I finished off my last two years there. And I've just been kind of going through the recruiting process, but like throughout the process, I had to learn the business as well. And then I also seen some kids also going through that struggle. So I started mentoring and training them and how to get into college themselves while I was going through the process myself. And then I've just been grinding and trying to get to where I need to be now. You know, it's just I'm trying to put on another helmet and some pads and, and ball out and take my blessings. So, I mean, that's that's quite the the path to get to even just to where you're at right now of having a, an opportunity to potentially make or get a chance to make an NFL roster where you're working at like 99 percent of people who ever put on their pads can't even say that they're where you're at right now. So to be able to work through that whole process of going through a couple of different schools, what was that like? Were you actually playing at all of those schools you were at or was it like a just got to get through here so I can move on to the the next thing to give me an opportunity to play type of situation. The truth, the truth story behind all of that was that my dad was actually um, had a kidney disease when I was a kid growing up. Um, he had a kidney disease called FSGS. So I wanted to go the way to any college, obviously like any other kid, but I ended up having to go junior college. Um, and then Lackawanna college was a school that, you know, took me in, but he started dialysis after my first semester. So at that point, it was my responsibility to come home, help the family out as much as I can. I was also going to Nassau Community College, but I was a full-time student with 16 credits. And then I was or 16 to 18 credits. I was working four jobs at the time, full-time. Oh, it was it was a lot for me to balance at the time, taking care of my family at the same time. It was just a lot when I was like 18, 17, 18. Um, then it got to the point where it was too much. That's why I moved into Brooklyn. And I was still mm -hmm. home, but I was able to focus on myself a bit. Graduated from there. Then when I was going through the recruiting process there, my dad actually got accepted on a transplant list at UC Health Hospital in Colorado, even though he lived in New York. So at that time, I was thinking, OK, long term was beneficial for the family. So that's why I committed to school in Colorado as well, because it was it was more beneficial for the family. If he got his transplant there, I'm there to take care of him, still do my school football and all of that stuff and then send him on away. And now he has the family back home and then I'm good to go. You know, so it was more beneficial for the family all around for me to be at these places in my life. Um, but I, like I said, I'm just still pursuing and chasing my dream and trying to get done what I need to get done for myself as well. Man, you have, you have been through the grinder. That's for sure. Two things I got out of all that. One, 
you work ethic is never going to be an issue. Like I, you said, you were working four jobs at one time. Like that's yeah. crazy. I think I'm doing a lot right now working two, four is like, I can't imagine doing four jobs. So like props to you for that. Also, second thing, family, extremely important to you, which I think um, in this uh, case, you might be able to echo this talking to Damon Talbot uh, over at Draft Diamonds a couple months back. He actually mentioned how like a lot of GMs will actually say like, if a player really values their family, sometimes that's a real big thing because you got to be able to protect the people who are around you. You got to be able to play for the people around you. Like that's, I think that's probably huge. Absolutely. When it comes to my teammates too, I mean, I look out for them the same way I look out for family. I make sure that, you know, they're not, they're doing the right things and making sure they're good in aspects. And, you know, do you need some, do you need a rod? You need some food, like what you need. And I, I look out for my teammates, even from day one of college and high school. till now, like, that's just what it is. That's I mean, that's awesome. I love hearing that. Casey, what, what do you got? Let's let's go over to you. So you you said you you you're originally from New York, right? Right. Yeah. And you had to move back to Brooklyn. Are you originally from Brooklyn? No, I'm originally from Long Island, New York. And that's, yeah, that's I, right. That's right. You said, then, you said that. And then I moved into Brooklyn. I moved back to Brooklyn. Yeah, I got you. I got you. So there's only one team, NFL team, one NFL <laughs> team in New York. Right. And that's obviously uh, Buffalo Bills. Right. So my question to you is, did you grow up, you know, being a Buffalo Bills fan because they're the only team from New York? Or was there was there like New Jersey teams that that you rooted for or anything like that? Uh, As a kid, I actually I bounced around from team to team as a child. I was just such a football head and who I was a fan of as a kid. That's just You know, so at one point I did like the Buffalo Bills because my dad, you know, kind of played a little joke on me, said Andre Reid was my cousin kind of thing. Oh, so, I got you, yeah. <laughs> That's and, awesome. And, and, as a young kid, so I thought that was true. And then obviously as I got older, I found out it wasn't, you know, sadly. But, you know, so – but, I mean, I was an LT fan, LaDainian Tomlinson and Lawrence Taylor and then Champ Bailey. So I, I was just a football head as a kid in general. So there was no, like, specific team I was dedicated to. So, okay, and, so you were you were more of, like, a, a player fan as opposed to just specific teams then? Pretty much, yeah. I bounced around a lot as a kid. So was there a player that – like growing up or even now you try like you look up to the most or you try and mold your game off of the most at this point in my career i just kind of mold and try to pick apart all of the knowledge i can take from any coach and any player that i train with from the coaches i trained and players i trained with in florida to colorado even the coaches in, that i have out here in jersey and new york and stuff i just pick apart the knowledge because you can never have too many you know pieces in your utility belt you know so whatever i could use and whatever's going to help me get to the next level that's what i take but as a kid, I was compared to Jason Taylor a lot because I was a defensive end. I was a tall, skinny, but pass rushing and, you know, that kind of kid. But at this point, I'm just a fan of anybody who's willing to teach me and help me. Bill's fancy nightmares of that guy. <laughs> <laughs> so so at this point, you know, um, you're trying you're trying to get to the league. Right. Mm-hmm. That's like that's the ultimate goal, obviously. Um, what makes you different? You know what I'm saying? What is different about you? than everybody else who might be in your shoes right now, right? What makes you different? Because I'm very coachable when it comes to the aspect. I don't really have an ego. Like, at this point, I have to humble myself regardless. And I take the coaching from any level at any coach or any player. I mean, I'm not there yet. So I have to take the knowledge and see what works and what doesn't work. So being coachable is one. Being versatile is another thing. I could play the edge, um, but I also long snap. And I've done special teams from kickoff, kickoff return, uh, punt, all of that stuff like that. So if I have an opportunity there, so be it. I'll take my blessings as they come kind of thing. And then just being the fact how I carry myself off the field, no team would ever have to worry about me off the field because I know how to carry myself. I know what to look for, what to look out for, what to do, things like that. I mean, I train and mentor kids now. I put five kids into college in the past couple of years. I got, you know, the nonprofit I expanded. So there's a lot of things I know how to do on and off the field. Yeah, and, and so we we definitely want to get into the nonprofit Um Towards the end, we want to give you a chance to talk about that a lot. Um, but before we obviously keep moving forward, you mentioned you play multiple positions. Yes, I was I was looking through your uh, Twitter profile. I looked, I watched the huddle uh, highlight video that you have, and a couple of things that I noticed were not only do you mention it in like your profile that you play multiple positions, but on your huddle highlight video, you actually put your special teams clips on there too, mm-hmm. which like. I, I feel like you probably don't see that all that often, but that like I just feel like that means you take a lot of pride in your special teams play as well. Would that would you agree with that? Absolutely. Because at the at this point in your career, you never know when your last chance to step on the football field is. 
So if I if I'm able to impact the team and help a team, whether it's on kickoff, kickoff return, running down the field and being a madman, punt, whatever the case is, that's what I have to do. But they in order for me to get to that point, they gotta see that I'm capable of doing it too. So if I could step on the field in college and do it, I should be able to do it at the next level and they need to see that. I like that. I I love it. I do. Yeah. I do. Um I, I've got a couple of questions that I, I like to ask. Um <laughs> in an interview style um, type deal, which we're family. So I feel like I can ask you these questions. <laughs> okay. um, what, if you could be any animal in the entire world, what animal would that be? And why, what do you see yourself as? Hmm. You're thinking of an animal right now. And I just need you to say it. And real quick, before before you answer, <laughs> I did tell you that this was gonna there was gonna be a tiger question at some point. This is not necessarily the tiger question. If that's your answer, awesome. If it's not, that's awesome too. I just wanna I just wanna let you know that's not the tiger question. Okay. Uh then I would I probably say I'd probably say a a tiger, I guess. Yeah. I'm gonna say okay. a tiger. All right, let's, okay. let's get into this then. Okay, why, well, why would you say a tiger, Casey? Before you, before you do, no, no, your no, no, thing. no, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. I'm not seeing red yet. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, so, what, what makes you say that? Hey, my name is Thomas Reed of the Third, right? I'm a tiger. Why, why, why is that? Because a tiger just it has no fear. It gets done what needs to get done. It knows how to survive and and get things done and be prideful in what it does. Like it. So, and that's just the lifestyle I live from the family that I look out for to my teammates that I look out for, for my own life and for my future family. Like I get done what needs to get done. So that's why you're, you're a tiger at the end of the day. That's what you are. I'm a tiger. I'm going to get, <laughs> I'm going to get mine. I'm going to do what needs to be done. I'm going to get it. I love that answer. I love that answer. Um, and then another question that, that I have is um, when you wake up in the morning, right? Everybody has one motivating factor that, that just d- it gets them through the day. They have that one motivating factor, right? Mm-hmm. What is your motivating factor? My motivating factor? I actually have two. And I'm like, I have one. One is my family, hands down. I got to do what I need to do on and off the field, whether it's my the seven degrees I graduated or six degrees I graduated with to um, my, my football career. I got to get done what I need to get done for them. And it's just the fact of making it to the league. I've been blessed enough to go through what I went through in my life to still have this blessing to pursue it and get it done and actually reach this point. I got I to gotta figure out a way to get it done. I got to figure out a way to get it done. So those are my two motivating factors every morning from the time I go to weights to the time I go to bed, do my recovery at home, whatever the case is, that's how I invest into it. Yeah. You're just going to get it done at the end of the day. I'm going to get it done. Right. I love it. So, so this is kind of a weird question. So just bear with me. Right. Um, Do you think that I could take a tiger one V one in a fight (laughs) gladiator style? I have a I have a knife, I have like a like a longer dagger, right? And I'm mm. in a big gladiator style arena, right? Do you think I would take a tiger one v one in a fight? Absolutely, why not? You would, if you, you. you're projected as the underdog, the underdog is what always comes out on Let's top. Let's go. So, Let's do the thing. Let's do it. Yes. Now, now hold on. I'm so no. I just gotta play devil's advocate here. <laughs> um, you just a couple minutes ago, you said you were a tiger. He didn't say me as a tiger. All right, that's fair. That's fair. I'm going to respectfully <laughs> disagree with your response to his question. Said, That's a fair answer right there. I just, I just said, I just said an average Joe Tiger. Could I take an average Joe Tiger? I wasn't talking about Thomas Reed the Third. You know what I'm saying? I'm not talking about him. I'm talking about an average Tiger, just an average little little bitch Tiger. That's all I was talking about, right? And Thomas said, "You can do it." Thanks, anything, Thomas. I appreciate you. Of course, man. Anything is possible. We here. We here with it. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, Thomas, we'll, yeah, have to, yeah. we'll have to add you to the short list of people who are agreeing with Casey right now on that. We like that's a, that we just like to get a little a little out of out of the box with some of our guests and ask them that question because look, Casey thinks he can do everything, I can and do it. sometimes that's a great mentality to have, especially when if you if you're an underdog guy, you, you need to have that mentality of look, I can just get this done. Mm-hmm. And to bring it back to you, I mean, it seems like you have that same mentality being a guy who has gone through a couple of different uh, college situations and working as hard as you have to get where you're at. I mean, it seems like you have that same exact mentality. Absolutely. Uh, so in terms of training, th- I mean, this entire last year has been odd, weird, difficult, yeah. whatever adjective you want to use to describe it. It's like you, everybody could have a different one. 
But for you, how has this last year kind of affected either your path to potentially getting to the NFL or just your ability to train and, like you said, get done what needs to get done? How has that all been, you know, affecting you personally? When it came to the possibilities of getting picked up by a team and stuff like that, I can't really speak upon that because I can only control what I can control, which is how I handle myself and me being in shape for when that opportunity comes. So throughout that process, I was, you know, still hitting the field, still doing my lateral movements, my speed, trying to work on that, my strength and conditioning aspect. Um, I have a team pretty much built up behind me. So I have a physical therapist that's giving me like stability exercises, mobility stuff, and allowing me to use like his weight room facility that he has at his house to stay in shape kind of thing. Um, so I just, I still been doing this whole, this past year, like, yes, it has been a little different, but the work ethic and the consistency that I put behind it hasn't changed. Um, and then this past year, like I still do my cupping, my acupuncture. I still see my therapist for all my retreatments and stuff like that. Like I'm still, I have my nutritionist. I do my meal prepping and cooking on my own. I'm invested to it to the fullest effect still. So nothing has really changed. The only difference is we went through a pandemic and now this year things are opening up. So hopefully I get my opportunity somewhere. Yeah, that would be that would be awesome. Are you training with like other players who are in a similar situation trying to get into the league and get a chance to to make a roster? Or are you uh, kind of you just I know you said you, you assembled your own team. Are you just working with them and just them or like what, what's your training situation like right now? So my training situation, I currently stay in Colorado and I'm training at Landau Performance in uh, Centennial, Colorado. And I train with some of the Bronco players I've worked with. I've trained with some guys that are in the same boat as me. Um, so it the, 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 the fact that I'm working with those guys who had that same hunger as me and then working with the guys that are already there, I'm just picking apart the knowledge, like I said, and trying to be coachable and taking what I can while I can. Um, and then, like I said, I still have my cupping, my acupuncture, my treatments and all of that stuff. So all of that is still there. I'm still working with dudes in the same boat and players that are already in the league now. I love that. I love that. Um, I, so I, I have a couple more questions. Casey, do you have do you have more questions? Also, I just want to double check before we yeah, keep yeah, going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. You want to go with your? You want to roll with yours, uh, and then I'll come back uh, to me. No, no, no. no all no, right, no, all no, right. No, let's no, keep no, this train rolling then. Keep so keep rolling. You do list multiple positions, and mm-hmm. this is something I always find very interesting with players when they have the ability to play multiple positions. They are vocal about the fact that they play multiple positions, but as somebody who used to be an athlete, not an athlete anymore, didn't even get the chance to play in college, just a high school athlete, very low level athlete. But I was the type of guy who I played multiple positions in uh, basketball, but I had one position that I knew I fit best at. Mm -hmm. What do you have that? Is it like I know you list outside linebacker and defensive end, and then obviously special teams is kind of like that extra. I can just do whatever you need me to do type of thing. But between outside linebacker and defensive end, do you have a preference? Or do you have one that you feel like you personally would fit better at at the next level? I played defensive end my whole life, my whole career from high school to college and stuff. But I know things always can change depending on if the team is running a three four or four three. So you got a four, two, five, whatever the case might be. So you have to be versatile as much as possible. So playing with my hand in a dirt compared to playing standing up is very similar in some ways. Um, But that's where, again, it comes into the coaching. So I've been taking the coaching from players that are already there playing standing up, how they get off the ball and how they, what foot they push off of angles that they hit, you know, pass rush moves on and how to do read keys. And then I played it with my hand in the dirt my whole life. So I'm used to that. Um, but I've also learned a little, you know, middle linebacker. I've been learning the coverages and how to drop back and different schemes and how to cover tight ends and things and, and running backs coming out the flat kind of thing. So I'm I'm trying to make myself as versatile and take the coaching as much as I can for any opportunity, because if there's no point in being short minded at this level. You're, like I said, your blessings do not come often. So you got to take what you can get. It's a blessing to even be here. So you got to go and get it. Yeah, no, so I did notice that a lot of times on your huddle highlight reel, you were lining up hand in the dirt. So uh, you played four three defense for at uh, in college, correct? Four three and then a little four two five. Okay, all right. And Nap's like, I don't even know what a four two five is. No, that's what, okay. I, what do you it's mean? A, I don't know what a four two five. And that's okay. That's okay, Nap. Don't freak out about it. Um, <laughs> hey, just real quick, Thomas. Um, have Have you ever worked out with uh, Demarcus Walker? Just Just out of curiosity. Demarcus Walker. Yes, I have. 
Have you? Okay. All right. Well, I'm a big fan of his. Huge fan of his. I'm I'm a big Florida State fan to begin with, right? Mm-hmm. And he, he was he was a huge leader for us on that defense. So when he said I worked out with Broncos players, I was like, well, hold up now. Let me just <clears throat> let me just let me just go ahead and do some research real quick. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Huge fan of him. Yeah. No, he, and, great guy. Great guy. Now I was about to say, and he's got the same kind of mentality that you do too, mm-hmm. right? So that uh, perfect fit. So. Yeah, I, le- I learned a lot from him while I was working with him. Is there so out of out of all the guys that you're working with, whether it's the Broncos players or guys who are in your similar position fighting to get a spot, who has been the toughest competition on the other side when you've been doing your workouts? Like the guy who's pushed you the most? All of them. I'd probably say all of them. Like we all like we we all at that level where we know that every little detail matters. And I'm very critical and self-disciplined and accountable enough to like critique myself. But if there's something that I don't know, they're going to point that out for me. So we all get to work and we all coach each other. We all help each other. Um, and when it comes to being in the weight room, we all push each other. So it, it, it's just a, it's like being in the locker room in the offseason pretty much. Like everybody I train with, they're all good, good, all good guys, all good people. Do you prefer bench press or squat? Oh, oh, that's an easy one. It's, it's kind of tough. It's kind of tough because there, there's days where I have good days and then on a bench and squat. And then I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm feeling it a little bit. And I have like really good numbers on a squad or I'm ready to like, all right, I'm ready to bang it. It just depends. I don't, I can't really pick and choose on that one. It's I tough don't know, pick, man. Tough to pick a favor sometimes. It is. I don't, I don't know, man. The sky's out, thighs out. You gotta go with it. You, you <laughs> that gotta go. That does seem to be the trend this year. I you like gotta, you, I like you, you gotta go with the squat. You know what I'm saying? So, and here's the thing, like, and I don't know if you've noticed this, right? You've probably been too busy, like, head down, just grinding. But Mm -hmm. NFL teams, man, they're big into thighs this year. Like, this is thigh season. You know what I'm saying? Like, the other day, there was – I don't know if it was, uh, you know, Ian or Adam, but one of of those NFL guys were just tweeting out, and they they tweeted out a picture of the Atlanta Falcons running back, and they were like, look how big his thighs are. So – I'm not saying that this will help you get attention from teams, but maybe a little five pick here and there might help. <laughs> I'm make sure that I have my shirts rolled up when I do my squats. That's the thing. With the good camera angle. Look, <laughs> look, Josh Allen got drafted as high as he did in part yes. because of Josh Allen looks good in shorts. Because like yes. that was just a thing. Like let's just get this rolling. We got to find some sort of some sort of phrase for you. Something. I don't, Casey. You're going to be better with this than me, but like, not a chance, man. No, hey, right. listen, I'm not going to workshop lie. this offline, but let's get something going and let's get some thigh picks out there, and maybe that's going to be the thing that maybe just separates you from some of those other guys. Yep. Skies out, thighs out. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there it is. There it is. That's your next yeah, Instagram that caption. <laughs> um, so, uh, Thomas, tell us tell us about your nonprofit organization because I think that's huge, right? I think that's that's big time. So, uh, give us a rundown for it. Why why did you start it and all that good stuff? Uh, so, coming out my freshman year of college, I started it pretty much just to kind of allow other college athletes and semi pro athletes that were in my area to feel like you know to help the community in a way where we don't have to be NFL superstars at that point. Where to kind of give back to the community, it was kind of just to allow people to feel like, hey, listen, we understand that you know you're athletic, but I'm glad you I'm glad we can come and talk to you. You're here for us. We have a support system that we typically don't have. And then from the athlete's point of view, it was kind of just like a humbling thing to be like, you know, I, I, I appreciate the fact that there are people that look up to me and it's, I just never knew, you know. So it was good for us to go to, you know, the Children's Hospital, the VA hospitals, um, do the United Nations luncheon at a point in my freshman year you know, go to the AIDS walk and support those people, kidney disease, and just expand and the Boys and Girls Club. It's just, it's a good feeling to kind of give back and allow people to feel like, you know, we, we can't, we're cared for, especially in this time and day and age in our society and what we're going through. It's, it's very important for us to connect in that way. That, I mean, so, that sounds awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, he, he, he was very en- enthusiastic about that, wasn't he, Thomas? Um, so <laughs> give me, give me, tell me a story, man, because I, I love a, I love a good feel good story. What was it like? What moment? in the nonprofit organization, right? Where you were like, man, this is it. Like, this is, this is why we're doing this. Right. What was that moment for you? Uh, the moment was when I took my junior college athletes from uh, national community college, my, some of my teammates, we were, we had some downtime and I was like, yo, let's go get back to the community. They were like, how we didn't know how 
And I set up the event. I called up the location, set the date, set the event up for them. And we just, you know, got to shoot around, play a little basketball with the kids, take some pitches and stuff like that. And the fact that a lot of them were like, oh, my God, you play football and we want to go to the games and wanted to take pictures. And we had like their parents come out and be with us and stuff like that. The fact that we were able to make an impact on those kids and allow them to actually just have a day of peace and have a good time um, is something to look forward to, as well as the parents. Uh, it, it was it was a big thing for me. So we all took a group picture and it was just it was just a good time that day. It was an amazing time. I love that. It's incredible the impact that you can have on like on a, a kid's life when I mean you play high school, college football, play whatever yep. sport. You like they look up to you so much and you can have such a big impact on them in such a short time when you have that opportunity. And I love the fact that you, it wasn't something that like somebody else presented to you. You actually went out and you searched out how to do that and you got it all set up. Like I think that that's the coolest part about this entire thing is that it wasn't you taking advantage of an opportunity of like, how can I, you know, kind of make myself look better by doing this? No, you were just like, no, I, I just want to help people out. And I think that's super cool. That uh, That's huge. Yeah. Huge. And, it, and I'm, I'm, I'm still kind of expanding on it and, and trying to broaden the horizons on it. Um, I, like I said before, I've gotten five kids into college throughout the process and teaching them how to go about the recruiting process. Because, again, I went through it in a, in a, in a, in a certain kind of way. And I've seen that I didn't want no kids going through that and kind of falling into that realm of a place that they shouldn't be at. You know, so I kind of coached them up, taught them what to look for, how to go about it, what to do. And all of them ended up continuing on to play football at the next level, whether it's NAIA, D2, D3, um, go get their degrees and be able to start a new chapter in their life. You know, and I'm not that's not something I want to brag about too much because it's, I, I don't want to seem like, you know, I'm doing it for that purpose. But yeah, that another kid is able to you know, continue on with his life and have his blessings that I had. Um, that, that's what makes me feel good. Look, if you don't want to brag about that, we'll do it for you. Cause like, I'll do to, it. Yeah. To be able to say that you were part of this, like another kid's journey to help them get to where they're at and accomplish their goals and their dreams. And whether it's helping them out financially or helping them out, just, just being a mentor, it doesn't matter to be able to say that you did that. Not many other people are in that position that you've been able to put yourself in. No, I appreciate that, fellas. Appreciate it. Look, look, man, I ain't got no shame. I'll brag about it all day long. I do yeah. not care. Ain't no <laughs> so, shame over here. No shame. So how can how can people get involved in that? Is that is this something where like you'll take donations to help them get in financially, or is it something where just the notori notoriety of like the program that you're running with the nonprofit is going to be good? Or how can how can people get involved with this? Uh, they could always just reach out to me through social media. If they have, like, if a coach has a bunch of players that, you know, has some downtime and they want to get involved in the community, I'd be more than welcome to take the players in. I'll go through the process with them, talk to them about what they're looking for and so on. And then at that point, I'll be able to set it up and just continue helping them out so they can go and enjoy it, help market their organization, help market their team. But like I said, there also a lot of players have a good feeling, let the people in the community have a good feeling and let everybody just be blessed, you know? Yeah, for sure. So, <clears throat> I love that, by the way. Um, I know Kyle is very iffy on you know the nonprofit, <laughs> but that's okay. We don't have to worry about that. Um, you we're you running. Love making me seem like the bad guy out here. What? No, I would. <laughs> I would never. Um, so we're running. We're running out of time, Thomas. I just real quick. Okay, real quick. I want you to tell us if there's one thing that people got out of this video, this this very short video. What is the one thing they should take away from you? that I get done what needs to get done, regardless of the fact of whether it's on the field or off the field. If a team gives me an opportunity for the fans, for the team, for the coaches, for the organization, I'm going to get done what needs to get done on and off the field. I'm going to give back to the community, continue making an impact on lives that need that need the help. And then I'm also just going to continue helping the locker room, help the organization and be there for whoever needs it. You know, I'm going to do my part and do what I can and control what I can control. I'm going to do what I got to do. And that's what, that's, that's how it needs to get, that's what needs to get done, plain and simple. All right, that's just about a perfect answer. Though. Yeah, yeah, that was, yeah, yeah, just about. Yeah, just about. Um, about a perfect answer. So uh, on the Nap Nose Buffalo, and of course, this is a little bit different. We did video uh, this time instead of doing our normal podcast, but no one listens to that. Maybe somebody will actually uh, watch right, this video. Um, we do something at the end. Kyle always asks for a go Bills. Right? I, so I actually and, had, before we finish this up, I actually had oh, one more question. Yeah. Okay, sure. Right, one more question. Right. And more I question. think this is this is a question I think a lot of people would want to hear. What would getting that opportunity 
to make an NFL roster, getting into training camp, getting into even even just getting into training camp, but even past that, making an NFL roster, what would that mean to Thomas Reed III? That would mean the world at that point because I've worked so hard to get to this point. I've went through the stronger, the the struggle in and out. Like no one could really imagine. This has been a journey that I've been on pretty much by myself from day one since I left high school. Um, so it would mean a lot. And then the fact that the organization and the fans and all of those people are going to give me that opportunity, I owe them that respect. So I got to make sure I got to get done what needs to get done, like I said, regardless. And, and whether it's on the field, off the field, continue making a change, continue making an impact. So they, they, it's going to mean so much to them, me to the point where my family, they're going to be set. My future family, I got to make sure they're set. And the fans and organization, they're going to be set. Everybody's going to be good. I promise. I can tell you, everybody who's listening to this is definitely going to be rooting for you. I know we're both rooting for you. We're, we're going to be Thomas Reed third fans wherever you go, whether it's Buffalo or it's somewhere, somewhere else. Uh, yeah, I, I will yeah. buy a jersey. I will buy a jersey well, wherever you land. Well, I mean, I wouldn't that's a go promise. As... No, that's a promise <laughs> I will make to uh, well, you. Well, and here's the thing. Like, me and Thomas, like, we're boys. You know what I'm saying? So when yeah. he does make a team, like, I know he's going to send me one. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, like – now, if you can go and buy all the jerseys you want, but I don't know if we're That's extra support, man. If I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna... to send you one with my last name on it, just so we you know. See? Oh, yeah, yeah. See? <laughs> Look at there. Look at there. Look at there. Um, and I can't believe you waited. You saved the best question for the – well, the second best besides, you know. But you saved the second best question for last. That was absolutely incredible on your part. Um, so what I was saying is, is on the Nap Nose Buffalo – um, little ordeal that we have going on. We typically say go Bills at the end of the, the podcast, the video has whatever you want to say. Um, but for you, it's a little bit different, right? Because you don't want to just be tied down to the Bills, right? So I, I'm just, I'm leaving it out there for you. You don't have to say go Bills, right? I don't want anybody to look up a video and all of a sudden you're a Jets fan. I don't want Bills Mafia to look it up and be like, hey guys, I know he he's playing for the Jets right now, but here's him saying go Bills. Like, I don't want that out there on the internet forever for you. So I understand, right? Mm -hmm. So I just want I just want that out there in the universe that this is what's about to happen, okay? Okay. See, I wasn't even going to put him in that situation. I wasn't even going to do that. I was going to just leave it at and we didn't have to. No, absolutely right, not. Well, I guess let's wrap it up with let me get a go Bills. <sighs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You know what? Go go nap nose buffalo. We're gonna go. Let's go. I like that. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't like that at all. Go Bills. <laughs> Listen, I appreciate y'all even bringing me on the cast uh, on 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 the podcast and on the, on the staff and everything. So I gotta show love to y'all before I show love to any other team. That's I, fair. I appreciate that. That's fair. I appreciate that. All right. Well, we definitely we definitely appreciate your time. This was a lot of fun. Um, if if you do end up on the Bills, I just want you to know. It, you have an obligation to come back on. Fair enough. Right. <laughs> no, 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 you say that. You say that, but <laughs> let me tell you, it's an obligation. It's that's, that's a contract. <laughs> okay. Hey, listen. Whenever you want to send it over in writing, we're gonna talk. All right. Sounds good. I appreciate right, it. Um, we'll, of course. We'll talk later. Yes, sir.